old Bugatti or Jason Ball, you just be Phil <laughs> Madeira. Um, well done. Uh, this is special. It's a name synonymous to this football club uh, from, from, from Dad and from your brother. Where does this stand in the, the Phil Madeira career? Oh, look, it's obviously a great achievement. We've, uh, there's always been a Matera at this great club for, since day one, and, and Wally, my oldest brother, is here tonight, and he sort of paved the way for Peter and I. And Look, to be the second brother to be in a, in a Hall of Fame at this great club, um, yeah, it's, it's an honour, and uh, I spent a couple of, couple of days with Peter a couple of weeks ago on the farm in Moama, and uh, we spoke about it, and he sort of tapped me on the back and said, mate, well-deserved. So I was really, uh, really excited when I got the, got the call from... Uh, from the club to say that I was, you know, going to be in the Hall of Fame, I was, uh, yeah, quite chuffed. Father figure, not dad, Wally, I apologise. Um, how is Pete? Yeah, he's really well. He's, uh, he's loving life. He's got a few sheep and, <laughs> and uh, he's in a really good spot. He's, uh, you know, he's got a young daughter, Molly, who's uh, keeping him on his toes and, you know, he's back to himself and, and the heart's pumping blood again, so he's uh, pretty good. Good news. When did you think you arrived as a, an AFL footballer? Was it a game or a moment you felt like you belonged? Oh, look, when I first rocked up here, um, we used to train down in front of Steve's. There used to be an old rugby ground there, and I rocked up at, I think it was like 68 kilos or something, and, and skinny and, you know, from the country, and everyone kept saying, you know, you're Peter's brother, and we'd go to the, I'd go to the fence to sign an autograph, and they'd say, no, no, we want Peter, and I'd say, OK. <laughs> um, when they started asking for my signature, I suppose I thought I made it, I suppose. Um, it was, yeah, it was a couple of years in. I, I wasn't a great kick early. I had to work a lot on my, um, my chasing and tackling. And I remember Mick Moldhouse said to me that the best thing I could do was learn to put pressure, um, to use my pace and to put pressure on the opposition when we didn't have the ball. Um, and Woosher was big on that when we sort of, when he took over. But I really tried to make sure that if I didn't have the ball that the opposition backmen were scared and were looking around to see where this little fast rocket was going to be. I was gifted with a lot of pace and... Uh, and knew where the goals were. But, yeah, I suppose it was, you know, a couple of years in, really, Goss. The one-two punch with Scotty Cummings, I think a year that you kicked over 50 goals, he wins the Coleman medal. He reckons he should have kicked 130. He reckons he gave <laughs> you about 30 little uh, rope the dope over the top into the goal square. Yeah, that was a good a good combination, you and Scotty. Oh, look, it was a great combination. When I first came, Summer was here and then he left and then Scotty rocked up and yeah, got, got a good rapport with Scotty. He was dirty. He won the Cobble medal. I think he's the first Cobble medalist never to make the All-Australian team, which was a bit unfortunate for him. <laughs> no, it's Tell perfect. him that all the it's time. It's actually perfect, actually. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, look, we had a good combination going there, but he didn't last long. And then along the time, we had sort of Andrew McDougall and Lynchy come along. and Yeah, so it was, yeah, it was a bit difficult at my height, kicking all the goals. But... Um, <laughs> Thanks to Cuzzy and the boys hit me on the chest there and again, it was good. Um, consistency was the thing. Did you pride yourself on getting up every week and hitting the scoreboard every week and laying half a dozen tackles every week? Was that, was, was that part of your, your resume that you're proud of? Yeah, I think, I think as a small forward, and, and I looked at Longy before, he's a little bit taller than I am. Um, you know, I think as a small forward, you really have to um, make sure that you are contributing to the team. Um, some days it's like being a seagull, especially when the ball's down the other end. But when you get your opportunity to take it and when you get your opportunity to lay the tackle. It's, um, it's very much a, it's a, sometimes it can be a lonely spot when it's raining and the ball ain't coming in. And we had a lot of those times when Judge was coach, um, God rest his soul, but uh, they were tough times. But yeah, look, it's, um, as a small forward, it's just, uh, I think a couple of goals a week, which I average right through my career is something I can uh, hang my hat on. And, and of course, life away from footy, business life and the likes. I mean, and how close do you stay in touch with footy? Um, of course, you know, Brother Wally and Pete and yourself, and you've, we've always got that connection to West Coast. How much do you take in? Oh, look, in 2003, I sort of looked at both my brothers and they weren't sort of... I, and I was lucky enough to have an apprenticeship, so I've got the material electrical, which we've had for 20 years, and my business partner, Dean's here today. So actually this month to, in February, we've been in business for 20 years and we run some big contracts with Woodside and we've... Uh, He's a stalwart and a great friend of mine and uh, wouldn't have been able to start the business without him because while I was playing footy, he was off running the business. Um, and he still does that now, um, which is a good thing. Um, but, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's sort of business. But footy, look, I've had a box or a suite at the club for maybe 10 years since I've been at Optus Stadium and we bring clients along. But I just love being in there with my family and my kids and, and watching the footy. And last year was a bit tough, but hopefully this year we can turn it around. How's your golf? Very good. Play, uh, oh, play, good. play, play at uh, Cottesloe <laughs> of single handicap, so I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, really happy. You win often? Uh, every now and again. Yeah. Every now and again. Every now and again. <laughs> All right, I'm sure you want to thank a few people. 
Uh, yes, I would like to thank a few people. Um, firstly, I'd really like to thank the club and the uh, installing this um, honour on me. Um, you know, we've had the Matera name at this footy club for a long, long time, and um, and it's been awesome to be able to be a part of such a such an awesome club. And you look around this room, and there's past players here that I've was lucky enough to play with. I sort of played in the back end of my brother Peter's career in 1992 when he won the premiership. Wajin sort of had a massive party, and we all sort of uh, had this party in the back of my parents' backyard. And you know, Wally, as I mentioned before, was an inaugural eagle. He was uh, obviously he used to wear number one here, and I used to look up to him. I remember going down to the South Fremantle Football Club when my brother was playing down there, and I'm sure there's a few people in the room that remember names like Stephen Michael and Nicky Wimmer and Stan Magro and Noel Carter and all of those sort of players were playing in the, in the South Fremantle side that my brother was playing in, and we used to drive up into Kingswood. You can imagine there's seven boys and one girl crammed into the back of the Kingswood. Um, driving up to watch Wally play um, and he used to play at South Fremantle Oval and the Foundation Day Derby was one of the biggest games you'd ever go and see and, and that sort of gave me an inspiration to become an AFL player so I'd really like to thank my parents and my family. Um, I've also like to thank my wife Susan who has been my um, wife or been together since we were 19. Um, She's been a number one supporter of mine for a long, long time and we've brought up three beautiful kids. Um, Jessica, Taylor and Cooper are all here tonight and Cooper's um, just been selected in the Claremont Futures squad so he's uh, hopefully going to be the next Matera one day to pop in here, you never know. Um, yeah, look, and you know, there's, this club's made up of such a great um, history and you know, you look around the room when you've got guys like Trevor Nisbet running the club and you look around and there's Murray McHenry and there's player, people that have been at this club for a long, long time and you know, Ken Finch is the first doctor I ever came in and he's, he's turned 90 and he's here tonight and uh, you know, it's one of the most prestigious clubs you could ever play for. I was very privileged and honoured to play here um, and I was really honoured to play with my brothers and to be able to follow Wally's footsteps and, and obviously to play with Peter and but also to play with great players. Um, it's been great. Um, wicked to see you here tonight, cuz. Um, good to see you on the track, mate. Well done with that. I'm uh, looking forward to one day you getting back on the beers, but it's uh, good to see. But thanks very much, and uh, thanks very much. It was a great honour.